Coffee is a deliciously complex drink, with its irresistible aroma and energizing kick. It has been a staple in many people's lives and a topic of extensive scientific research. Researchers have spent years studying its impact on our health, and opinions remain divided. Some people argue that a hot cup of coffee in the morning has only a positive impact on our bodies, helping us to kickstart our day, while others warn us that coffee consumption may increase the risk of chronic disease in the future. The reality, as usual, lies somewhere in the middle. You will be surprised at the changes that might happen to your body if you refuse to consume coffee for 30 days. To prove this, we will be sharing the findings of an experiment conducted recently. Watch until the end to find out how a cup of coffee looks like in different countries. But first, here is the experiment and notes of the girl who took part in it. Like many other people, I've been starting my day with coffee for a couple of years now, and I couldn't imagine starting my day without it. However, I started to wonder what changes I might experience if I stopped drinking it entirely. Unable to find clear answers online, I decided to explore this for myself. And now I'm excited to share my personal observations with all of you. Week 1. The first day will be the hardest. You couldn't concentrate and only wanted to sleep. Throughout the week, try different treats like green or fruit-flavored tea, chicory, fruit and nut salads because caffeine, you know, is an addictive substance and it affects our brain enormously. Since the chemistry of the brain changes, it starts to demand larger amounts of caffeine to get the desired result. Week 2. You will feel an enormous irresistible desire to drink coffee at the beginning of the second week, and chicory will not help you anymore. At this stage, the body came to its minimal, and that is why there was no use of consuming chicory. It is actually the hardest of all stages. It's possible to get such symptoms as fatigue, headaches, and even mood swings. Week 3. You started to find it much easier to fall asleep at night without tossing and turning for an hour in bed. That is because a caffeine boost lasts for approximately 6 hours. And if you drink coffee less than 6 hours before going to sleep, you will end up lying in bed wide awake. As a result, in the morning, you will feel tired, for which you will need an extra dose of caffeine. The cycle continues. That is why when you quit drinking coffee, your body adjusts to a lifestyle without any caffeine and your sleep becomes deeper and better. Week 4. It will be easier for you to wake up early for your work rather than hitting the snooze button again and again. Though many sources claim that coffee is the very source of antioxidants, it's not the complete truth. All caffeinated drinks have a bad impact on your health in the long term. That is why when quitting consuming them and shifting to drinking more water, you start to get more natural energy, which results in better health, better sleep, and a better look. What will you get from this experiment? Number 1. Weight Loss Potential Many coffee drinks are loaded with sugar, syrups, and high-calorie creamers. Quitting coffee can reduce your calorie intake and support weight loss goals. Number 2. Better Sleep You will sleep soundly and feel rested after 6 hours. Just that is enough to cut down on coffee for you. Number 3. Healthier Teeth Coffee's acidity and staining properties can weaken enamel and discolor teeth. Avoiding coffee can improve oral health and promote whiter teeth. Number 4. Better looks. Healthy sleep made me look fresh, and I got rid of the circles under my eyes. Moreover, my teeth look much whiter and healthier. Number 5. Better hydration. Caffeine is a mild diuretic, which can contribute to dehydration. Replacing coffee with water or herbal tea can improve your hydration levels, benefiting overall health. Number 6. Reduced anxiety. Caffeine stimulates the nervous system, which can exacerbate feelings of anxiety or restlessness. Eliminating coffee might promote a calmer mood and reduce jitteriness. Number 7. Cleaner environment. Can you imagine how much trash coffee consuming produces? Now I feel that I care about the environment and help it to a small extent. Number 8. Better mood. Many of us feel grumpy until the first sip of coffee. Not consuming caffeine erases those ups and downs, resulting in the constant good mood. Number 9. No more addiction. Quitting coffee helps break the cycle of caffeine addiction. Without daily caffeine intake, your body gradually resets its dependence, 
reducing withdrawal symptoms like headaches and irritability. Over a month, you may notice more stable energy levels and fewer cravings, allowing your body to regulate its natural rhythm without the need for a stimulant. This process frees you from relying on coffee for daily alertness and energy. Just to clarify, you don't have to quit coffee entirely. It's better to enjoy it as an occasional treat rather than a daily habit. Limiting yourself to one or two cups a week. Focusing on high-quality brews allows you to still experience the benefits of coffee, such as increased alertness and improved memory, without overdoing it. So, did you like the experiment? If so, hit the like button, and we would be glad to hear the results of your staying away from coffee for a month. And here's the bonus of the video. What a cup of coffee looks like in different countries. Almost every country and culture has its unique ways of brewing it to perfection. We did some research and picked out just a few of them, and they are quite fascinating. Egg coffee, Vietnam. The fundamental ingredients here are egg yolk, condensed milk, sugar, and hot coffee. Lapland coffee, Finland. A local kind of cheese is placed in the cup before being covered with the coffee. Hot coffee, Mexico. Coffee is brewed in a clay pot with cinnamon and raw cane sugar. Arabic coffee, Saudi Arabia. Lightly roasted coffee brewed with cardamom, served with dates. Turkish coffee, Turkey. Made by boiling finely ground coffee with water and sugar, served unfiltered. Espresso, Italy. The classic recipe with an added slice of lemon. The lemon should be flattened with a spoon against the side or bottom of the cup first. Lagrima, Argentina. Just a couple of drops of strong coffee are added to some frothy milk. It might be more accurate to describe this as milk with coffee rather than the other way around. Bonbon coffee, Spain. This is an espresso but with added condensed milk. Mixing the latte with milk produces something special. Spice coffee, Maracas. Grinding a mixture of spices including sesame seeds, black pepper, and nutmeg, together with ordinary coffee beans produces an unusual but very strong drink. Coffee with tea, Hong Kong. This mixture of coffee and milk tea leaves a strong impression right from the first sip. Frappe grease. Coffee, ice cream, condensed milk, and some ice water produce the tasty delight known as a frappe. Far easier, Germany. This was invented in Germany to hide the presence of alcohol at family gatherings. A portion of rum is hidden underneath a generous amount of whipped cream together with the coffee. Café Tuba, Senegal. During the roasting process, guinea pepper is added to the mixture. The drink itself is brewed in the same way as ordinary coffee. Coffee with orange, Jamaica. In addition to the slice of orange, Jamaican coffee also includes a traditional portion of rum to make for an exciting and tasty drink. So that is all for today. See you in the next one.